Hi, my name is Michael Green and I'm from the School of Biological and Environmental Science at Liverpool John Moores University. And I'm going to talk to you today about some of my doctoral work on the transgenerational effects of paternal enrichment in zebrafish. So the overall aim of this project was to examine the potential for the inheritance of ecological information in changing environments. And the idea behind this was that habitats and environments can change at different rates over time. Um, and when that change is slow, species adapt through genetic evolution and Mendelian inheritance. This is kind of the traditional view of evolution. However, over shorter time frames, say within a single generation, adaptation can be achieved through phenotypic plasticity. And so this may be the result of environmentally sensitive epigenetic markers, which regulate the level at which genes are expressed. And so the inheritance of these markers can also occur through the germline and represents a form of non-genetic inheritance. And so usually the epigenome is carefully reprogrammed at fertilization. However, sometimes these markers escape reprogramming and this may provide a source of medium term adaptive potential. So I focused on environmental enrichment in the form of structural complexity. So this has been shown to affect brain structure and function in controlled research environments. And it's been shown to affect a number of behavioral realms, such as cognitive ability, sociality, locomotion, learning and memory. And much of this has actually been found in rodent models. However, there is a growing body of literature of these effects in fish as well. And so I asked the question, does enrichment change behavioral phenotypes both within and across generations? So behavior is particularly useful to study in this context as they're highly dynamic and they can change very rapidly. Um, and there are a number of behaviors in fish species um, that you could look at. So for example, um, locomotion and mobility is particularly important for predator avoidance. And so here we look at things like speed and freezing behavior. However, in social fish species, shoaling also provides increased protection through group vigilance. And this can be measured by increased alignment and coordination in movement. So the first phase of the study was to look at the within generational effects of enrichment on a population of fish. And this phase was started off by conditioning all subjects to our housing systems for one week prior to the start of the experiment. And so this was done because these were the first generation of fish in our facility and we couldn't maintain information about maternal background. And so this was done to control for that. So we built these custom recirculating water systems which could comfortably house all the fish required for this study. And so the fish were conditioned in these standard housing tanks with a single artificial plant. And so immediately following conditioning at the start of week zero, fish were tested in a novel tank group shoaling test. And so these trials were recorded um, and they were tracked with the open source software ID tracker. And so I wrote custom MATLAB analysis scripts to extract useful behaviors from these trajectories obtained from my D tracker. And so here we looked at things like speed, mobility, and group cohesion. Um, and then so all fish were then exposed to either standard housing or enriched housing for a total of four weeks. And so here in figure A, you can see the standard housing condition with a single artificial plant. And in figure B, you can see the enriched housing condition with gravel substrate, artificial plants of varying colors, shelters and tunnels. And in each of these conditions, there were 100 subjects. So all subjects were then um, subject to an identical behavioral testing at the end of week four. And in this way, we could compare the same behaviors in the same tests across the two trials and look for before versus after effects. And so I found that a good way to visualize the results for all of these six measured behaviors was using a PCA approach. And so here the relationship and the correlation of all six traits are calculated and reduced down to a fewer number of dimensions, in this case two, onto which each of the traits could be loaded. And each tank is then scored for how well they load onto each of these new dimensions. And this can be plotted as shown here. Um, so you can see in figure A, which is the results from before, from baseline testing before experimental exposure, um, you can see that there's no difference in component scores along either of the axes, and there's no separation between the two groups, which shows that the groups are largely the same. However, after the enrichment in figure B, you can see that there's a clear separation along principal component one. And so the load-ins um, from this show us that this seems to be a, a result of differences in speed and mobility and cohesion and proximity-based traits. 
So for each of these traits, uh, a mixed model was performed um, to look for tri treatment by trial interactions. And so actually what we found that the largest effect was with average speed. So here you can see that pre-treatment, there's um, pretty much no difference between the two groups. Um, however, in the post-treatment test, you can see that there's a large difference between the groups where the enriched fish, fish were actually much faster than uh, controls. And so the second phase of this work was to look for inherited effects of paternal enrichment on F1 behavior. And to do this, we performed control breeding through the male germline um, with a separate cohort of uh, non-experimental female fish who were paired with male fish from each experimental group. So this gave F1 larvae from two separate paternal backgrounds um, from enrichment and those from standard housing. So we obtained 20 clutches of larvae from 10 separate males from each of the two experimental regimes. These fish were screened during the first five days and then reduced to 10 larvae per clutch, given a total of 100 per group. They were then moved into our housing systems and reared under standard housing conditions until adulthood at about three months of age. And then so F1 adults were then baseline tested using the same test as performed in the F0 fish. Uh, and this, importantly, this testing was actually performed on experimentally naive F1 fish who were reared under identical housing conditions. And so in this case, the only difference between these fish was the experience of their fathers. And so again, a similar approach was used to analyze the results from F1 groups. A PCA was used to examine the behavior of experimental groups across all of the six measured behaviors, which were the same six measured behaviors. Um, and here you can see at baseline testing that there is a clear separation of experimental groups along PC2. And so the loadings onto this component suggests that this difference is mainly driven by changes in locomotion and mobility. And so again, uh, a mixed model uh, was performed on each of the traits and the model performed on average speed actually showed that there was a large effect of parental experience on group speed at baseline testing. And so here groups from rich fathers were significantly faster than those from fathers housed in standard housing. Interestingly, um, the groups from these backgrounds were then split again between either control or enriched housing following baseline testing and tested again um, after four weeks of experimental enrichment exposure. And what we found that there was no further increase in speed um, with repeated exposure to enrichment. And even F1 naive, uh, offspring naive to experimental enrichment caught up with those that were exposed. Um, and so what can we take from um, these studies then? Well. Within a single generation, exposure to high levels of housing enrichment for four weeks at adult, adulthood has significant effects on behavior in a novel tank group shoulder test. And so these effects uh, are on both locomotor activity and group cohesion, although the largest effect was actually observed on average speed. Um, and then these groups exposed to high levels of um, housing enrichment were on average faster than those exposed to standard housing. And then actually further, Furthermore, between generations, fathers exposed to high levels of enrichment sire offspring who show significant changes in locomotor activity compared to offspring from control fathers, where F1 adults from enriched fathers are on average much faster than those from control fathers. And so finally, just how does this fit into the strange framework? Um, well, mainly due to experience. I mean, so these studies really show that the uh, experience of lab animals exposed to varying levels of enrichment results in distinct variations in several behaviors. And so not only this, but parental experience is also important as these results show that parental experience of housing conditions can also result in behavioral variation in offspring. And this highlights the importance of keeping track of not only individual experience, but parental experience in experimental animals. And it also, highlights the importance of the thorough reporting of husbandry regimes in the published studies and experimental histories as well, as this can clearly be a significant a source of significant variation. So finally, I would just like to acknowledge um, my supervisory team and LJMU for funding this research and my colleagues. <laughs>
Thank you.